Hello everyone and welcome back to Renowned Explorers International Society back on schedule edition. Here we go. Second expedition. Uh, time to go. Do we want to go to Mali? Athlete be gathered in Rogue. We only have Athlete. Uh, Caribbean is probably the way to go even though it's meant for aggressive. That will be good for us so let's take that one. And um... Let's jump straight into the episode with a follow-up from earlier. So, um, my my wife was out in the other room earlier for the previous episode. This was a couple hours ago. And, um, when she noticed I was talking about, uh, you know, going on a diet and the weight and everything, she uh, reminded me that one of the reasons she was really concerned about losing weight is because she has had a constant headaches, uh, multiple a day for the for several months, so almost a year actually. Uh, and she finally went to a neurologist a couple months ago to see what the problem might be. And he mentioned a lot of things that it could be, um, but ended up putting her on some steroids to treat the headaches. And uh, it, would, it would be like, I think it was a month of steroids, or no, two weeks of steroids? Two weeks of steroids, or something like, something like that. And then once you finished it, hopefully, uh, that would just help you break the headache cycle. Uh, apparently, it's fairly common for people to get what they call status headaches, which are headaches that you you get from stress, or originally, they're from stress, and if you get a migraine and a stress headache at the same time, then they combine and become like a status headache. I know it sounds like some sort of video game thing, but apparently that's the way it, or that's the layman's understanding of how it works, at least. And you get a status headache, and a status headache just doesn't go away. It just doesn't. And she had const a, a constant headache for weeks before she went to go see the neurologist. Um, so she went through the steroids, did, did all that. It helped. It broke the, the single headache. Now instead she has multiple headaches a day instead of one big headache constantly, which I suppose is progress. Uh, but they didn't stop it, and they were supposed to stop it. So uh, she went back to the neurologist... I mentioned a lot of things. They did a MRI for her. Um, they scanned her head, and they they found a couple of little cysts. That's very very typical uh, for people to have little ones. And she, apparently, the ones that she has are considered to be small enough that they're not a concern. But one thing they did find out is that she has a little bit of excess water in her brain cavity, or something like that. Again, not a neurologist. Don't take anything I say as as medical advice, please. Um. So, the only way to treat that... Ooh, an epic encounter. We'll check that out. The only way to treat that is with a spinal tap to drain the fluid. Uh, now, obviously, they don't want to do that if they don't have to. Um, but that's apparently the the next step. And anyway, the reason the reason that she mentioned this... And we are going to board this ship. Let's see. Let's, uh... Let's see, can we make a raft? Yeah, 96%. Nice survivalist, that's good. Um, the reason she mentioned this earlier is because uh, she had gone to a her general practitioner a couple months before. And her general practitioner had, of course, pointed out that she could do to lose some weight. Okay, fair. That's, that's her job, right? Her job, ooh, this is not going to go well. We will probably fail this. But, yeah, we'll see. Um, the, the doctor's job is to make sure that her patients are healthy, right? And so if if she considers it to be important that she mentions to someone that, um... Ooh, Anna's level one quick thinker, so she can take out a charger and the encounter starts. Cool. Uh, anyway, so it's the, it's the doctor's job to point out when something could be done to make someone healthier. And in this case, losing some weight would be healthier for my wife. There is no doubt. And my wife understands that. She, she agrees with that, more importantly, which is good. You know, it's it's always... You always hear the stories of people that don't want to hear that they have that problem, and they'll just refuse to listen because uh, it doesn't fit what they want to know, right? My wife does not have that problem. She is aware that she, she needs to lose some more weight, and she's willing to do something about it, which is great. Um, but, of course, that was one of the first things her, her female doctor, her general doctor, uh, told her, is, you know, lose some weight. This will be good for you. It'll, it'll help with a lot of stuff, and uh, it'll make you feel better, and just in general, it, it would be good. It would, it would be good for you to do that. 
And my wife, of course, told her, like, well, I've already done, I've already lost some weight, I want to lose some more. And it's like, that's great, that, that's really good, do that, essentially, right? <laughs> uh, so where this comes in, and the reason why I'm mentioning this, is because when she went to this neurologist, who happened to be a male doctor, I don't know if this had anything to do with it, I suspect it might have, but I don't know that, so I don't want to cast, you know, blame on him. Um, but she went to this, this neurologist, and he was telling her all these things that she could do. She could take steroids, she could take this medication, she could get a spinal tap, these would all possibly help, possibly, no one knows for sure, possibly help her headaches. And my wife came, came home from the first visit and, and looked up some of the stuff he had mentioned just to get a better idea of, of what it, the stuff was. And one of the things that was constantly mentioned is that uh, if you are overweight, that can cause you to have extra fluid in your brain cavity, or in, in, your, in your head, in your cavity, head cavity, brain cavity, whatever it's called. Again, not a neurologist, whatever. Apparently, um, being overweight can contribute to having extra water in your head. Uh, and so she didn't want to take, obviously, the, the advice of what she had looked up without consulting someone. So when she went back, when the steroids did not work, she asked the neurologist, like, I saw that, you know, this, this extra fluid could be caused by, by being overweight. And do you think that could be it? And he goes, yeah, yeah, that, that, def that definitely could be it. If you could lose some weight, you may not have to do the spinal tap. And of course, my wife is going, well, why didn't you just tell me that? Like, why, when I was here last time, didn't you tell me that one of the big things that can cause extra fluid is um, is being overweight. Like, why didn't you mention that? I, I will, like I will go lose weight rather than have a spinal tap done, right? Um, <laughs> and it, she she was almost offended that that she had to drag this out of him that losing some weight would be good for her. Um, and he just he seemed really reluctant to tell her that. And even when she mentioned, like, is this a thing? Uh, he still seemed kind of reluctant to be like, yeah, even though he eventually did say, yeah, it, it, could, it, it could help. Um, and I think that's one of those things where the societal... Now again, I don't want to blame this doctor. He could have had something else on his mind. I don't know what. Ooh, we can actually afford something here. Do we want something? Yeah, let's grab the talisman, sure. Five spirit and five grit, eh. Okay, let's buy the dagger. Mm, two attack power. Okay, I should buy the glyph apparently. Oh well. Um, I don't want to blame the doctor. He could have had another reason for the the way he he did what he did, right? Um, let's go to Anna. There you go. Okay, Anna gets a tear orchid. Very nice. Um, but I I do think that to some degree at least, ooh, a discovery. Good. That was just in time to prevent Rivalo from getting that. Excellent. I do think that to some degree, the societal sort of expectation that you do not tell women they are overweight, because it's, it's insulting, right? Um, it, it's society, for whatever reason, and the media and everything else, has no real problem with telling guys they are overweight, right? In fact, uh, overweight men are often used as, as, as the butt of jokes and comedies, and no one really cares, and, and I'm not going to get into that. That's You know, to some degree, I'm fine with it, and to some degree, it's just not a, a subject I really want to get deep into in a medium like this uh, but uh, there, there is definitely a societal pressure at least in America to not tell women that they're overweight and my wife was very offended on behalf of her gender that uh, this doctor was apparently at least the way it looked like was it was not telling her to do something that was possibly important to her physical health uh, because he didn't want to tell a woman to lose weight right uh, where is her general doctor uh, who is female one of the first things she mentioned is, hey, lo lose some weight, you're, you're, you're overweight, you know. Um, and she and we've seen that before, right? We've seen that before, where where even doctors that are willing to say that you need to lose some weight tend to be like, well, you're, you're you know, you could stand to lose some weight, or it would be healthier to lose some weight. And they really avoid words like obese or, or heavy or, or, or overweight, right? Because um, they're not flattering, and it's understandable. And sometimes that can be difficult to hear. Uh, for, for, for anyone, in, for male or female, whatever age you are, it can be difficult to hear that, that you need to make a change, right? And, uh... But when someone's health is on the line, especially when they're getting headaches 24-7, 
for months, and she still is. She still is. she still hasn't gotten it fixed. I and mean, that's one of the reasons we're gonna go on a diet, right? Um, when when that sort of thing is on the line, you'd think you'd mention anything, right? Anything that could possibly help. Um, anything you could possibly do to to solve the problem, uh, up to and including surgery, like a spinal tap, if you have to. But uh, you know, hopefully, you'd mention some other options that would might make that surgery not necessary, right? We are not going to do this epic encounter. I'm a little scared of it. We're gonna we're gonna move along. Ah, uh, ooh, yes, we want Professor Paskirakova. That will help us with our discovery. So we're gonna grab that, and we'll minion, minion, go. All right, be stern. Yes. Okay, very good. Min Young is dead serious about everything, so she is happy that Anna is being stern. Let's do this the right way. I will study hard to improve. Very good. And we're going to take a discovery. We don't care about the nationalist perks, but discovery is going to be great for us. So, uh, so yeah. Anyway, my wife wanted me to mention that that she she ran into this that uh, uh, and and for anyone who who may be having a problem like that because apparently it's very common in women to have. Uh, the headaches very very often according to the neurologist if you have headaches three or more times a week you qualify for for, for help essentially for, for neurological help um, she's at it again this time Min Young is not entirely content with the way the crew has stored away their findings just piling everything together like that might lower its value Min Young proceeds to unpack all the papers and collectibles forcing the crew to stop but Anna agrees hey you're right Anna and Minyoung proceed to organize all your spoils. As Minyoung expects, everything is preserved better with her new packing technique. Very nice. And they like each other a little bit. 5 speech defense and 10% speech power. Um, so yeah, so if you are a if you're a person who gets more than 3 headaches a week, you actually qualify uh, to, especially if you're insured, by the way. If you, if you have insurance, a lot of insurances will cover medication uh, for that because you it's considered necessary at that point. And uh, it kind of surprised my wife because... Uh, she's pretty much always had three or more headaches a week. Um, she can't remember a time when she didn't. And I think there's a lot of people that are that are like that. So, just just if you, in case you didn't know, what a great place to camp with a beautiful, clean creek. Min Young tells everyone to prepare for a comfortable day. The crew spends their day relaxing, but something interesting happens. Um, someone makes a nice gesture. Oh, Min Young comes out to the rest of the crew. Uh, with a little homemade gift, a friendship bracelet. Min Young just wants to give it to the crew after all they've shared together. Very nice. And we got a little friendship bracelet. Very cool. Uh, the night becomes more enjoyable when a delightful dinner is served by. Uh, and now Charles already has cooking. But we don't need survival from anyone else, so we'll just give it to him again. Alright. Uh, we got some extra items. Do we want any of those? Five spirit, five grit. Oh, they're trinkets. Okay. I did not realize that. Alright, well, whatever. Let's, uh, let's move along. Yeah, we're gonna ignore these smugglers. And keep moving. Now, this is our last supply, so we're gonna start taking debuffs if we don't end. And I think I'm willing to. Let's just take the one debuff, lose us some armor. And, uh, I know I didn't explore too much, but I think I'm willing to go. Alright, let's go. Alright, the Pot of Drosh's Treasure. Do we set up a defensive camp? No, because we're terrible at it. And Minyoung will conduct a study and find the treasure. Very nice. But you hear a deep laugh from behind. It's the smuggler boss. I heard these rats were on my island, but I didn't think they'd be so kind as to get this treasure for me. Get your paws off my booty. A ticking bomb. All right, we will try to defuse it. Sure, 75% chance. Yeah, we'll try it. Nice. The boss confronts you. It seems you won't go down with just an old sea mine. We'll show you what happens when you disrespect my territory. Very good. Okay. And of course, this is all great for me, right? Because I, I get to make the joke that her head is defective a couple times a day, which which I love. <laughs> I'm not sure how much she appreciates it, but, uh, but she deals with me, so, you know... Um, uh, let's see. What do we want to do here? I think we just want to sit here and get rid of some of these pirates before the boss gets arrives. Let's see. Uh, extra grit. That's good. We like that. We'll have Anna deal with this gal over here. 
electrocute her Anna or something like that. Actually, she's not physical attacking, so she's not electrocuting her. Maybe someday. We know how much Anna loves doing that. I can hear the cat out in the other room crying because the light is off and my wife's in bed already and I'm in the office, so he feels alone and lost. He does occasionally get lost in the kitchen when we're all in other rooms. He walks into the kitchen and gets in that back corner where the washing machine is, because the washing machine's in like a little closet connected to our kitchen. He gets back in that closet and um, and realizes he's alone and, and gets upset, like freaks out. He, he's not happy about it. It's quite sad. <laughs> All right, can Min Young finish her off? No, hmm, that's a little awkward. Uh, Charles can't either, so we have to leave this gal up, I guess. That's unfortunate. Uh, so I can hear him crying out there. He was very upset earlier, so um, I was, I was in the bathroom putting some towels away, I think. Yeah, I think that's what I was doing. And um, Merlin, the, the cat, walked in with me, which is very common. He, he likes to be in the bathroom whenever, whenever anyone is in the bathroom at all. Oh, I didn't realize she was in range. That's very unfortunate. All right, so she's going down. Uh, he loves to be in the bathroom with people. It doesn't matter who. It's his favorite room in the house. If someone heads for the bathroom, he will get up from wherever he is, meow excitedly, and run to join me. I don't know why. It's just a thing that he loves. Um, so earlier, um, he came into the bathroom with me because I was putting some towels away. And while he was in there, he was being very affectionate because he was happy. You know, he, he, if someone's in my bathroom, yay. Uh, and he's purring and he's rubbing the door. And you know how cat, if you have a cat, you, you know how this works. They they rub their face against the door. Or, or against any object, against the wall, against the door, it doesn't matter. They rub, the, they rub their face against something. And um, it's their way of putting their scent on stuff, but it's also a way that they show that they're, they're pleased. They, they just they just go around and rub stuff, and they purr. Uh, and so he's rubbing the door. But because he's doing that with his face, uh, he's pushing the door closed, okay? Now, it doesn't it doesn't snap closed or anything. It, uh, she doesn't He doesn't push against it that hard. But it, but it goes gently closed. There's a little crack, right? Where it's still open. But it, it's it's basically all almost all the way shut. Just not latched. And, and just not just not clicked into the door frame. Which is fine. He, he, you know, he's okay with that. But Merlin does not know how to. What's the best way to put this? You know what? We're just gonna be. We're just gonna say it like it is. Merlin is not intelligent enough to figure out how to open a door that has closed all the way to to cracked essentially. It's just not him. He, he can't figure out to put his paw out in the crack and, 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 and pull the door toward him. That's too confusing. He can push on doors, that's fine. Pushing on doors is no big deal. But pulling doors toward him is is above his his intelligence level. So, he's he's pushed the door closed. He's not worried about it because I'm in there with him. You know, he knows I have to leave in a second. But as he's in here with me, he hears my wife out in the kitchen give the cats new dry food. Now, they were not out of dry food. They had dry food. That, that was not a problem. They had dry food left. But she was just topping the bowl off, uh, just, you know, just to make sure they had enough for the night. And uh, they free feed. So they're, they're, not, they're not starving by any means. Um, they exclusively free feed. They get as much food as they want, whenever they want. And they don't have to worry about it. And, and they haven't had a problem with that. They're actually a very healthy weight. Merlin's actually still losing, um, which is good. And um, he was a little heavy at one point. He's he's back back into a, a good weight level now. But anyway, he's fine. And they get food constantly, so they weren't hungry. But he hears the food go in the bowl, and he wants to go check it out. He wants to go see what's going on. And he realizes that he has closed the door on himself and cannot figure out how to open it again, and freaks out because he's trapped in the bathroom. Even though the door is actually open, he just can't get a paw. He just can't figure out how to put his paw around it and, and yank it open. So yeah, so that was a that was a thing that happened, and that is the an example of what living with uh, with a cat like Merlin can be. 
It's it's very exciting at times. We are not doing a lot of damage to the smuggler boss, and we are actually taking, uh, on the other hand, taking quite a bit of damage. I'm not thrilled about. I'm gonna go get that grit. That's gonna help us out a little bit. And I guess we'll just keep working on him and hope he doesn't attack Yana. <laughs> he probably will, but. Okay. Okay, that's fine. A miss, good. That's very nice, actually. All right, what do we want to do here? Uh, I have my AOE back up. I should probably use that. Ooh, it's a really bad angle, but I can hit both. Might as well. And this will also give Charles aggro. Which is good in a way because, you know, that means that one of my lower members does not have aggro, but it's also bad because Charles is kind of low. Um, so yeah. I guess I'm just gonna stay there. More reinforcements, all right. Ooh, a miss. That was very lucky. How much grit does Charles have? He's been missed twice this fight already. That's pretty impressive, actually. 39. Yeah, he has quite a bit of grit. Hmm. Yeah, part of that is the 25 grit buff we're, we're, we're using right now. That That's a big part of it, to be fair. Uh... Yeah, we'll probably just sadden him again. I don't real Ooh, silences our targets for one turn if one target is excited. He's using physical attacks, so silencing is not gonna help, so we might as well just keep making him sad. Anna is probably going to go down either this turn or the next. I am just going to accept that as a thing that will happen. And try to take out the boss. Probably not this turn. But next turn. I don't even know if next turn is going to happen. Probably two more turns. Which means we're going to be getting low on resolve. We could actually lose just this turn. Nice miss there. That's going to be help. Because Anna will certainly go down. Unless she had dodged. Which, which was possible. Just unlikely. Ooh, I didn't realize Min Young was in range of that. Well, there we go. That's a defeat. Uh, too bad. Oh well, that was one of the earliest defeats we've had. That did not go well. It's gonna happen. We just we had to previous run before this. We'd had a very nice victory, and now we have a very terrible defeat. All right. Well, that's that, I suppose. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Regardless, uh, please put a like on the video if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more in the future, and I'll see you next time in Renowned Explorers. Thank you very much.